text for today is the reading from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. This is, comes from his second letter to them. I'd like to reread the first verse. I myself, Paul, appeal to you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. I who am humble when face to face with you, but bold toward you when I am away. My dear friends, how do you respond? How do you respond to things that frighten you or to people who say things to you that are untrue? How do you respond to things that frighten you, things that bother you, to things that make you uncomfortable? And still also, how do you respond when people are saying things that make you feel uncomfortable because they're untrue, because they bother you? We have two examples in this text. Two examples of this going on Two examples in one passage for us to look at. And it's a difficult passage unless you know exactly what's going on between Paul as he writes the people of Corinth and people. You see, there are people within that small church who have been saying that Paul's never really going to come back. He keeps saying he's going to come back, but he's not going to come back. He keeps saying all these things to tell them what to do and how to live their lives, but he hasn't been here. He doesn't know what it's like to live here. He just doesn't understand. And he sounds so bold and so powerful from far away. But you just watch. If he ever does show up, which we don't think he ever will, he'll be meek and mild and he won't say anything. He won't say anything that's going to change any of us. He won't be so bold anymore. And so as, as Paul writes these words, what he's really doing is he's writing back to them some of the things he's heard that are rumors. He's saying to them, I myself, Paul, appeal to you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. He talks about how we've been called to live in the love of Jesus and to bring that kindness and gentleness to others. But then he says, I who am humble when face to face, but apparently bold when I'm away. See, he's bringing their words back to them. And then goes on to share with them what his plans are. Goes on to share with them how he wishes to impact their lives. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. The question is, how do we respond? There's two examples of what's going on here. One way that we can respond is in faith, and the other is in ignorance. Ignorance to how faith works. Ignorance to how God works in our lives. You see, first we have to start with the wrong response, and that's the response of the people of Corinth who are in the church who are stirring things up that Paul's writing to. The gospel makes people uncomfortable. The message of Jesus is going to make people uncomfortable. Now, I know we as Christians sometimes have a struggle with that. Sometimes we say, how is it that hearing about God's love and mercy is going to make people feel uncomfortable? Let me go even further. The gospel frightens people. The message of Jesus not only makes them uncomfortable, but makes them frightened. Because they see things like little children in the dark who are scared at night, who wonder what's crawling around, only to turn the lights on and realize that there was nothing. Because you see, here's what frightens us. The gospel first points out our sin. First points out to us how we are failed and broken people living in a world where nothing works the way God intended. And we want to hide. We want to hide from our sins. We want to keep it in the dark. We don't want anyone to see the things that really bother us and the things that we make mistakes about. We'd rather hide in the dark. But someone Someone, in this case, St. Paul, is offering the light of Jesus, is showing the way. And the people of Corinth are struggling. They're struggling with how to be in the world, but not of the world. They're struggling with how to live in a place where all kinds of things go on. And if you think for a moment that it was different there than it is here, you need to think again. Because Corinth, as it turns out, Corinth is a place where all kinds of things were happening, and the best description I can give is, go up to San Francisco and stay for a while there, and you'll see Corinth. That's what it was like. All kinds of diversity, all kinds of trade going on, all kinds of businesses, and all kinds of people believing all kinds of things. And here is a small group listening to St. Paul about this new Messiah, about Jesus, who says we can overcome the world by loving the world. You see, we struggle. We struggle because when we fail, when we sin, when we make mistakes, when we do things that we know God doesn't want us to do and we wish we hadn't done, we struggle with that failure. 
and we try to hide. And we lash out sometimes, like the Corinthians did. We lash out and say things about others who might be showing us our sin. We lash out about others who might be pointing out what's wrong. But most of all, we lash out because we think it's the way to win. You see, what they're saying here is, Paul's not really that holy. He's not really that special. I mean, who made him so special? He keeps saying Jesus did. He keeps saying God did. But we weren't there. We didn't see that happen. And in fact, he came in once or twice, but then he keeps writing to us about the mistakes we're making. But he's not here. And you see, then the next part is, and he's not going to do anything. Because he doesn't have the power. He isn't going to be able to change who we are. And this is the response of the world. The response of the world, the response of sinful human beings is always, might makes right. You can't make me do it. I don't have to do it. You, don't, you can't change me. And what's the world do? We respond with might, right? Telling people what they have to do, forcing people to do things, nations going to war against one another. Why? So that we can prove that we have the power. So we can take from others what we want. So we can show that my enemy is right. But there is a different way to stand firm. There's a different way to stand firm that St. Paul wants to show us when he says to us these words. He's speaking to the Corinthians now and he wants to make sure that they understand that yes, they can push back. But he has started by saying he appeals to them in meekness and gentleness and then he says, Indeed, we live as human beings, but we do not wage war according to human standards. For the weapons of our warfare are not merely human, but they have divine power to destroy strongholds. He talks about the strength that God has, but he's talking about that still from the standpoint of meekness and gentleness. Still talks about it from the standpoint of loving your neighbor as yourself. Talks about it from the standpoint of one who had the power that he could say, do you not know that if I called upon my Father, a whole legion of angels would come? And yet he gave his life. And yet he sacrificed who he was. Humbly went before those who would say wrong about him. Humbly went before those who would abuse him. And simply gave his life. Because Jesus knew that the power of love and the power of forgiveness was far greater than any power of this world. He would stand firm in that thoughtful faith. A thoughtful faith that understood what was real and what was not. When we don't think about it, when we allow ourselves to become ignorant to our own faith, what we find ourselves doing is going back to the ways of the world and going back to the things that we learn in the world and forgetting where the real power is. The real power is God's change all things. And God works not through our strength, but through our love. Not through our ability to force people, but our ability to forgive people. That's how God works. And it is strange to the world, and sometimes it feels strange to us. Paul stands firm. He stands firm, and he shows us how we should live our lives. Let me ask you, what should God have done? What should Jesus have done to us as sinners? If we look at the answer of the world, what is the answer? When God found that all of creation had rebelled, when God sees that we do things that are wrong, how should God respond? And if we use the way of the world and the things that frighten us, we know that we should be punished. We know that we should be living our eternity separated from the one who made us and the one who called us to live our lives as holy lives. What did Jesus do? He came at the command of the Father. He came fulfilling what God had told him to do, showing that God is love and giving his life for us so that we would not die, so that we would have eternal life. So what is Paul really saying to the Corinthians as he writes to them at this point? What he's saying to them is, God's grace is powerful. And you may be squabbling internally about who I am, whether I'm coming or not. 
And in fact, Paul himself sometimes didn't know whether he was coming or going as he went on his journeys. The Holy Spirit led him and he went different places than he expected. But he wants to say, what he wants to get clear and across to them is, if you are following Jesus, if you are obedient to Christ, then yes, they're going to point out, they're going to punish, they're going to show where our disobedience is. And that's why we preach law and gospel. We preach the truth of where the mistakes are in our lives, and we treat, preach also the fact that Jesus loves us and forgives us. We follow in the footsteps of St. Paul. Now, I have to tell you, the world still sort of smirks at this and laughs at Christians and says, hey, I don't think they quite get it. We get told sometimes that we're weak. We get told sometimes that we follow fairy tales. We get told all kinds of things, just as the Corinthians were arguing amongst themselves about whether Paul was right or not. But God's love and forgiveness is the power that changes lives. God's love and forgiveness is the thing that changes nations and changes our world. And so as we follow Jesus, we stand firm. We stand firm in a thoughtful faith, a faith where we take the time to think through and remember that it has always been God's love and peace that has changed our lives, that has motivated us to do what we do. It is not the power of this world. Amen.